and we have the distinct pleasure of talking to a young lady that I'm a personal fan of. Uh, I love a lot of her work and, and the TV show as well. From Tyler Perry's For Better or Worse, Coco Brown, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, how are you guys doing? Thank you so much for having me. We're doing good. Uh, first of all, tell, tell people a little bit about the show. Um, what is the experience like on being on, on that show and, and everything like that? Talk a little bit about uh, that experience. Um, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been a great ride. It's been a great ride. We've been on, you know, we just shot our season six. And, um, you know, Jennifer's character, which I play, uh, finally has a man, and everybody is so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Richard, and she, she got him away from Keisha. <laughs> so, everybody's happy about that. You know, and um, we're on the show. is just, you know, it's, it's extreme pleasure because everybody, you know, has truly gotten into their rhythm of, of the characters that you really get lost in it while you're acting, you know, because people are so comfortable in those characters now. So, um, it's been an amazing experience. It really has. All right. That's fantastic. So let's start, uh, we're going to jump back now. Let's start from the beginning. When did you start? When did you really realize that this is what you wanted to do? Uh, when you, when you knew that this was your passion and this was going to be your career? Um, actually when they fired me, um, (laughs) (laughs) we're still, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, that kind of pushed me in the direction. I can't lie, because, um, you know, I was, uh, when I first started, I was doing, you know, stand-up, and I was also working a day job. And my boss at the time had come out to see me perform. And one day, like, not too long after that, I was at work, and she pulled me in her office, and she said, look, you are too talented, and you are too funny, and this job is going to hold you back. So I'm going to give you an option. Fire you and get a severance or quit and get unemployment. But you need to pursue this because what you do. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And that's pretty much how I ended up doing it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That's, that's an amazing story there. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of speechless on that one. That right was, there. That was, I kind of got thrust into this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Look at you now. So I was right. looking uh, at some of your stand-ups, some of your older stand-ups. You are so funny when mm. you're talking about skinny girls' legs look like backwards uh, parentheses size. <laughs> I could not stop laughing. So how did you get oh, into uh, doing stand-up? It was truly a situation, I think, where your destiny kind of finds you sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because I had never thought about being a stand-up comic. I mean, I went through, you know, all through college. I had gone to comedy shows. I had watched Def Jam, Comic View, all those shows, you know, Eddie Murphy, Raw, blah, blah, blah. And never was I ever like, ooh, I want to do that. Never. Um, you know, I kind of had my mind set on possibly being Claire Huxtable. You know, <laughs> I just wanted to be this. You know, I, I just wanted to be this classy woman who married a professional dude and had a bunch of kids. I mean, you know, and basically it took a friend of mine who saw something in me that I hadn't even seen to introduce me to a guy who owned a comedy club, I mean, which was actually Chris Paul, that's on the Tom Jordan Morning Show. Mm. And he, at the time, owned a comedy club in D.C., and he introduced me to him. And, you know, just talking over the course of the night, he said, you know, you're really funny. You ever thought about doing stand-up? And I was like, huh? And he was like, you should really try stand-up. And I was like, really? He said, you're funny. And I'm like, okay. He said, you should come by open mic night. And I said, okay, when is it? And he told me, and I said, okay. And I've never had stage fright, because, I mean, I've done theater since I was 10 years old. Okay. Um, and my mother did that because I was painfully shy as a kid. Uh-huh. And my mother wanted me to come to my shell. So she, you know, had me do theater. She had me do plays and, you know, things like that, because, you know, I was very shy as a kid, and I wouldn't talk. I was kind of a nerd. I just read a lot and stayed to myself. Mm-hmm. And so I, ne- I didn't have stage fright. So I said, okay, I'm going to get on stage and try this. And the first time I went on stage, they stared at me like I had two heads. Because <laughs> I called myself, you know, trying to tell a joke. And when I realized that wasn't working, I just cracked a joke about working for the circus. Because at the time, I did work for Ringling Brothers. And that got a laugh. And over the course of time, I learned that what's funny is what's real. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. You know, and, and that's been kind of my whole thing when I'm on stage. I don't tell jokes. I tell the truth. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. We're talking with Coco Brown from Tyler Perry's For Better or Worse. And talk about how that relationship started. How did you uh, link up with Tyler Perry? Wow. That, you know, it's so funny how that all came about and how you never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, you know, auditioned like everyone else for this role. Um, at the time it was called for better or worse, but it was a direct, uh, you know, um, you know, a play on why did I get married? You know, it was mm -hmm. all the characters. They were only replaced. They weren't replacing Marcus and Angela. That was played by Michael J. White and Tasha Smith, but they were replacing everybody else. And they were going to have it based completely on why did I get married? Mm -hmm. So at the time I went in and auditioned for the role that Jill Scott had, which was Sheila. And, um, you know, auditioned, thought I had a great audition. What was so ironic was after my audition, I ended up meeting the president of the studio, the vice president of the studio, this person, and that person. And I'm like, wow, who does, who meets all these people at an audition? But they like literally was like, don't leave, Coco, we want to meet you. And they like to be around and I met everybody. And I'm like, wow, so I kind of walked out pretty confident, like, I got this, you know? Um, four months later, <laughs> <laughs> four months later, um, I, at this point, I think, you know, I thought, well, I guess it didn't happen. Well, you know, keep, keep it moving, try to find the next thing. I'm literally in my bathroom first thing in the morning, and I get a phone call, and it's the president of Tyler Perry Studios telling me, am I ready to come to work? Wow. And I said, what are you talking about? And they're like, um, we, we, you got the part. We want to welcome you aboard if you, if you want the part. I'm like, yeah. They said, but Tyler has changed it a bit. And I said, okay. They say um, Tyler is a huge fan, and he um, loves your stand-up, and he's created a character called Jennifer that he wants you to play. And I'm like, oh, okay. Right. So come to find out, like a year before that audition, Tyler was in the audience at the Laugh Factory one chocolate Sunday night and saw me <laughs> and was like, she's hilarious. I would love to work with her. And I had no idea he was there. And fast forward, I'm on the phone, man. Fast forward, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being mommy, I'm being mommy. What you need, boo boo? Come on, pumpkin. I'm still being mama. I'm, 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 what you need, baby? We understand. I'm on the phone, sweetie. I'm doing an interview right now. Speaking Can you go ask Steady for what you need? Speaking of mama, I love okay. your son's name, of Phoenix. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you. Give mommy five minutes, pumpkin. I'm like, yeah, I'm so, he don't care mama got to do this interview. He don't care. Right, right. <laughs> he like, mama, I need you right now. I don't care about that. all that. All that don't matter to me. Because <laughs> I told him before I called you guys, I said, mommy's got to do an interview, okay? So give mommy some quiet time. He's like, yeah, all right. He came up there, mama. <laughs> <laughs> A four-year-old does not care. Oh, okay? no. I have not a three-year-old. Trust me. Right. And <laughs> I have a 10-year-old and one that's about to be one next month. <laughs> you could be shot. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say that's a bullet, but I need you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of parent duties, this is E-Will. I finally made it. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> I'm actually here because I had to pick my daughter up from school. I was doing my daddy duties. <laughs> hey. Ain't nobody hating on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so more with Coco Brown when we come back here on The Outlaws. The Outlaws radio show on the fcb radio network outlaws radio and we are still here with coco brown from tyler perry's for better or worse and uh before the break and before mommy duties you were discussing <laughs> um, how <laughs> how tyler right, right. Uh, was at your show and you didn't know right right um Come to find out, you know, when he saw that I was auditioning, he was like, oh, that's the girl I saw. She's funny. Can she act? Now, God willing, that when I went to L.A. in 2003, my whole purpose was to act. Right. I was already a comic, and I felt I was a, you know, I was a, a working comic. I went to act, so I went and inundated myself with any class, workshop I could possibly take to hone my skills. So, to me, there was just a prime example of when opportunity meets pre meets preparation, right? Because had I went in there and couldn't act out of out of my paper bag, I wouldn't be talking to you right now, probably. Right, right. No, but it's so funny how he was a fan, and I said, "You never know who's watching." Because I did had no idea this man even knew who I was. Mm -hmm. And to come to find out, he was a fan. Right. Wow. 
Wow. It's funny how things happen like that. Yeah, now, exactly. Now, I have a question. Um, do you enjoy and embrace the fact that you have been given the nickname The Truth by your female fans nationwide? I embrace it. I embrace it because, you know, we still live in a very sexist society, a very chauvinistic society. Yes, we do. And a lot of women tend to silence themselves for fear of, uh, of insulting a man. Mm-hmm or making themselves more desirable to a man. And my thing is, if a man wants to, a deaf mute for a wife, I ain't the one for you. <laughs> I know that's right. I like that in you. <laughs> I know and that's like, right. Seriously? And, you know, I say a lot of what women don't have the, the, the guts to say. You know, I call, and don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing men because I talk about things that women need to get together as well. Right. But I talk about the real issues that are out here, especially between men and women, especially between black men and women, you know, that is dividing us. And I talk about that and I make it funny, but people hit me up all the time after my shows like, oh, my God, me and my wife, pop, you know, me and my husband finally had this conversation. Me and my wife so needed to hear that. She's changed to you. Oh, Coco, can you write a book, please? And, you know, oh, <laughs> and, wow. it's like, right. and it's like, you know, people thank me for getting up there. So I, I embrace them calling me the truth because, you know, Tara Howard told me very early on in my career that when he saw me perform, he goes, you have no fear. And I said, no, I guess I don't when I'm on stage. And he said, whatever you do, don't lose that and incorporate it in your life. Wow. Wow. And, I, and that just stuck with me that, you know, you, if, if, if I let fear control my life, I would not be on the phone with you right now. I was supposed to, I came from a very traditional Southern household. I was supposed to go to college, meet a guy, graduate, get a job, get married, have babies. That was it. Come to my mama's house every Sunday for dinner. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, Southern household, where, where are you from? I'm from Virginia, Newport News. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Now, so, um, you know, I was deaf. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I, no, I was just saying I definitely wasn't supposed to be doing this. Okay. <laughs> hey, you, you beat all the odds. <laughs> right. I like that in you. Um, so, <clears throat> I know back in the day, I'm not sure if you still are now, but I know back in the day you were teamed up with Mental Fitness, Inc. to help spread awareness on eating disorders and body image issues. Um, yeah. Are you still teamed up with them? And, you know, me, myself, I'm a bigger guy, so I've always dealt with, you know, <laughs> like some of that negativity that people like body shaming and stuff like that. Is it still something that you're involved with and how passionate are you into that? I am not uh, affiliated with them right now. And it's not anything personal. I just got really super busy, but I'm still a very strong advocate um, about loving the body that you're in, loving the skin that you're in. I actually have a joke that I tell and I'm like, you know, I'm like all you big men out here feeling some type of way because you big, you even look rob a kid now and have hope, have hope in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they do say that big men are the end thing now. Looking like the Pillsbury Doughboy, all the y'all got hope. <laughs> 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 so seriously, you got to love the skin you in. You know, I mean, listen, I've been extremely big. I've lost weight. You know, it's so funny how... I've lost over 50 pounds and I feel really good about myself, you know, and right. people talk, compliment me how good I look and how the weight loss and all that. But yet I just got back from Italy a couple of weeks ago. I was shooting a reality show where they were trying to have a couple of black women go over there and, and meet men and see if they could find love in Italy. And do you know, here I am over here thinking I'm feeling good about myself. I've lost 50 some pounds. I'm down to a size 12. I'm looking good. I feel good in my clothes. Whoop, whoop. And I go over there, and the first thing the dude tells me is, oh, you're a big woman. Ooh, oh. That's because they don't know how to handle it. Right. <laughs> you would and think I was like, you would think well, I'm sitting there on, on, you know, now they got me on tape, you know, for the world to see with my own face like, mother, <laughs> <laughs> You you would think that them Italian men are used to them bigger women with all that Italian food and all them carbs. <laughs> right. I don't know. I th 
I, I'm personally, I'm personally just that all them women have bulimia or anorexia <laughs> because how they can eat all that pasta twenty four right. seven and stay small, they throwing it up or they do the way out. Because if I never see another piece of pasta again, it would be too so. <laughs> y'all trying to make me a full fledged diabetic out here with all this pasta. <laughs> <laughs> More with Coco Brown when we come back here on the Outlaws. The Outlaws Radio Show on the FCB Radio Network. And we're still here with Coco Brown from Tyler Perry's For Better or Worse. And you were mentioning a, a project that you were working on in Italy. Or is there anything uh, else that you're working on right now? Well, um, I am... God willing, I think everything, we're just now waiting for the final numbers, but um, I should be making a reoccurring appearance on a new Lee Daniels project called Star. Oh, fantastic. On Fox, um, and um, I'm up for another role on a new Amazon show that I actually have a meeting with the director tonight. So I got a lot of stuff on the stove. Mm, that's <laughs> so, good, that's good. But yeah, you know, and I just finished, I just finished shooting a new reality show for Bravo called Eat, Bay, Love. Uh, which is about three black women who go to Italy trying to find love. Nice. That's fantastic. When does that uh, show debut? Um, I'm assuming the spring. We just shot it, so I'm thinking the spring. Okay. I'm thinking the spring. Or late, or, or late winter or early spring. Okay, okay. fantastic. Are you still uh, touring, doing stand-up? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I have a couple of weeks off. Um, I will be at Texas A&M. I will be at Prairie View. I will be uh, down in Miami at the Miramar Performing Arts Center. Um, I'm doing the Capital Jazz Cruise with Jill Scott and the Whispers and Anthony Hamilton and all of that at the end of October. Um, you guys can catch me. I'll be at the Richmond Funny Bone. Um, I'm all over the place. If they go to my website, which is Coca Brown, C O C O A Brown, the number four life.com, they can check out my calendar and find out where I'm going to be. And if they Google me, please do not forget that A on my name because if you do, you will get a porn star, and that's not me. <laughs> I was actually about to ask you how you felt sharing that name, even though it's spelled differently with a porn actress. <laughs> uh, it sucks because I can't even cease to assist her because she spells it differently. Right. Because, like, it gets on my nerves because I've been 20 years and now they have some porn star come and people looking at me like, well, I Googled you, girl. But I'm like, that ain't. That ain't hey. On my name. Like, 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 like Birdman said, put that A on my name. That's <laughs> respect on my name. <laughs> well, Miss uh, Miss Brown, I have a question for you. In one of your stand ups, you said that you're a big hip hop lover. So I wanted yeah. to know. Who is your favorite hip hop artist out right now, or maybe not artist, but what's your favorite hip hop song out right now? Probably right now, the one joint that just gets me amped every time it comes on yes. is uh, "Father Stretch My Hands" by Kanye. All right, the, All the right. life of Pablo. Oh. It's just something about the way that song starts. Oh, it just gets me down. <laughs> gets you going. <laughs> I just want to be in it. I'll be in the car getting it, okay? We got my son singing it. Me and my son be in the car getting it on that song. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, and my son, for some reason, he loves Drake. So a lot of Drake is played in my house. Like oh, my wow. child knows all the words to control us. Oh my <laughs> that is awesome. That's very difficult to do to yeah. know all the words to <laughs> control it. Seriously, my son knows all the words to every Drake song out. It's frightening. It's like, I don't know. I call him my little Drake. <laughs> With, with with that being said, speaking of Drake, um, I don't know if you saw or heard uh, the video that surfaced on like social media with uh, Lil Yachty oh. and some of his friends uh, basically disrespecting Pac and Biggie, saying that Drake was better than them. Oh. Oh. Um, I don't know Who if you, uh, Lil Who Yachty, some of these little young you, rappers, they got like the hot Cheeto looking hair. Sweetheart, sweetheart, <laughs> you're, 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 sweetheart, the fact that I don't even know who you are and I can't even pronounce Hello. your name properly. Hello. Enjoy your five minutes of fame because Hello. trust me, it's going to be another future sound alike that's going to come and take your spot in about five minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Preach it, girl. At a mile a minute, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's these how are, she feel about it. These are the it. same kids that said that they wouldn't uh, rap over any old hip-hop beats and right. freestyle over them. <laughs> 
Well, I blame their parents. I blame their parents because apparently they were not playing any real hip hop around them and they have no idea what they're saying. So I don't even blame him. I blame his parents. That mumble rap. <laughs> right, because trust me, my child loves Drake, but my child also knows all the words to rock the bells. Okay. There you go. <laughs> all right, all right. I like that. So real quick before we let you go here, um, I definitely would be remiss if I didn't uh, ask you for your thoughts on some of the events that have taken place this week uh, with the tragedy in uh, Charlotte and in Tulsa. I, oh boy, you know, it, it's funny. I, 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 I keep getting asked if I'm going to put a statement out on Facebook or make, I can't put the words together because I'm, I'm so incensed and it's like, it's not even, it's not even just on some old trying to get a five minutes of glory on a, on a Vine video or people tagging or making my video viral. I have a black son. Right. And this scares the bejesus out of me that right now at four, I can pretty much protect him. Mm-hmm. But we're talking 10 years from now. When he's 14, his father's 6'4", 380 pounds. My child's probably going to be talking to me when he's 10. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the fact that, you know, I live in a great neighborhood right now, but it takes that one butthole that will see my child walking home from school and it's cold outside and he has his hood up. And now he thinks there's a hoodlum in the neighborhood. Or it takes that one cop seeing him five mommy's Range Rover and, you know, I'm going to stop him because he all he was doing was running to get mommy a Pepsi from the store. But because he's a little black boy driving a Range Rover, then he must be a dope boy or a thug. So we're going to... I'm freaked out, and I mean, I'm 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 grateful that they're going to prosecute this woman that shot that man in Tulsa because yeah. that was cold blooded murder. Mm-hmm. It yes. is no other way to describe that. How is he a threat walking away from you with his hands with up? His hands How up. is he a threat with his hands on the car? And then you're going to ball face lie and say that he was trying to reach in his car. Now, unless he's the invisible man, how the hell can you reach in the car if the windows up? Right. I'm like, right. I'm. I feel like, unfortunately, it's going to get a lot worse in terms of the protests and the people. Trust me, what we saw in Dallas ain't going to be the last. And, I'm, and, I, and I hate to say that because if they keep saying there are good cops out there. So why don't you police these bad cops? Because you know what you're saying. I know you got your little honor code and your little, you know, you know, code that y'all go by because y'all in blue. I said, but some of y'all need to go in and be a whistleblower because what y'all you're doing is damning your own soul because you're not saying anything. I know that's so if you want to join that person in hell, then you go right ahead. But I'm afraid that it may come down to a race war. And that's real talk. I really am because. God forbid if Trump gets in office, he's up here baiting black people with this bull crap rhetoric like he supports us and he wants us to believe that he's going to change things. If any black person believes that crap, they deserve to be on that boat back to Africa. <laughs> I know that's right. I know Ooh, that's girl. right. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve to go back in them fields and pick cotton. Yes, <laughs> you, you won't be the house Negro today. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I don't know what's going on in our country right now. It's, it's so it's sad. Right me. You know, yeah, I is. have I have a black nanny that's a male. I have a male nanny I, that, that rides around, you know, in my car with my kid. Mm-hmm. And all it takes is one ignorant cop to see my, him driving my car, not realizing my four-year-old's in the back seat and feeling because he reached for his license. He felt threatened. Now you're going to shut off the car with my kid. It's all scenarios that run through my head. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, my assistant, he drives a nice car. He's, a, you know, an educated black brother with a master's degree. But if a cop sees him, he's going to see a black man in a Benz. Now he's a threat. Mm-hmm. It's frightening that every time my nanny and my assistant and my brother leave this house, I am freaked out and I'm praying like crazy that some crazy trigger happy punk ass cop that doesn't realize that maybe you ought to say freeze before you shoot is going to do something stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. scary, and I just feel like it's probably going to be a full-fledged race war. We we need to prepare ourselves, because we got some Negroes out here ain't got nothing to lose before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And they're getting real mad. they beyond mad. You know, it's a shame that we're rioting in Charlotte right now, because how you shoot a man reading a book in a car? Right. And then lie about it. I mean, it's crazy. It's like, all them people that was mad at Kaepernick. I'm like, where are you now? Say something now. And Kaepernick ain't even kneeling over the veterans, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. That's what I don't understand. Why are the veterans taking that personal? He's not disrespecting 
Jew. He, he, are you serious? He's disrespecting the fact that this is supposed to be the United States of America, land of the free, home of the brave. And it's not that right now. We are in a divided ass country yeah. that has pitted white against black, Spanish against other, you know, poor against rich. I mean, we are so divided that when I go overseas and speak to some of my friends who live there that, that are actually natives of Britain and Australia and New Zealand, I don't have any answers for them because right now the United States of America is one big tail embarrassment to the rest of the country. It we is. really are. They're laughing at us. Yeah. It's like we're they're, a they're reality show to We the are not setting a very good example no. at all. Who wants to come here now? Right. Nobody. It looks bad. No, they're it good. They're good. Um, it's it's almost good. like we're a bad reality TV show for the rest of the world. <laughs> right. right. Oh it's gosh. really scary. It's really, you know, and like I said, it maybe would affect me differently, but the fact that I have a, I have a little black boy that I have to try to encourage his little rainbows and sprinkles mentality right now, but knowing that when he gets about 12 and that voice stage, I'm going to have to crush all his little dreams and tell him the truth. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. That's that's disheartening to me. Mm-hmm. That's disheartening that I'm going to have to crush his dreams and tell him the truth about him walking around with an imaginary target on his back. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, uh, to close this, let everybody know how to get in contact with you on social media. Yes, Facebook let's send up a high note because y'all got me asked. Don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> you should have asked me that question in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Now you got everybody sitting on the radio right now, but they slit their damn wrist. Mess with <laughs> okay, look. All right. Yeah, look. Y'all need to follow me and laugh right now. Okay. <laughs> Just Google me, Coca Brown, C O C O A Brown, C O C O A Brown. Please put that A on my name. And get the right Coca Brown. Okay. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining yes, us on the show. You. We really appreciate thank this. Thank you so much for having me, darling. Oh, thank no you. problem. You are a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God bless y'all. Y'all take care. All right, All right you as well. Thank you.